Good morning and welcome to the Art of Online Marketing live show. Today we're talking about repurposing your content. So hello, I'm Denise Allison and for those of you who don't know me, I help entrepreneurs create a profitable social media presence. And today we're talking about repurposing your content. All right, so first things first, if you're wondering why I have my headset, it's because I have someone here doing some landscaping and he's out in the tractor like plowing, plowing the bushes on the lawn. So that's actually not so loud, but the, uh, the questionable thing is when Tulo is going to decide that he wants to start barking at it again. So I decided it was safer with the headset. We're less likely to pick up tractor sounds and, and barking and I'll just overall be a, a better experience, even though the sound's not as great as, uh, you know, trusty, trusty yet here. All right. So for most entrepreneurs, creating content is really not your favorite thing to do. I know that because uh, it was a struggle for me starting out and all of the, the clients that I work with and the entrepreneurs that I talk to, creating content is not really on their, their top 10 list of things they love spending their time doing. And it really feels like a chore that needs to be done. And, and most entrepreneurs really don't have a plan or a strategy when it comes to creating content and, and what's going to go on to their social media pages and profiles. And so that means that each day they, they wake up and they're like, okay, gotta, gotta post to social media. What, what am I going to say? And then finally they get it done and it's lunchtime and they spent like the whole half a day um, figuring that out. <laughs> so maybe not really, but sometimes it definitely feels, feels like that. Right. So when, when we think about repurposing, repurposing content really the purpose is to save you time so that you're not recreating something from scratch every single day you're not getting up saying what i'm going to post about and create the whole thing and 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 go for it there and it's going to make it easier save you time and it's going to force you into having some kind of plan which i know is a huge huge setback that most entrepreneurs have where it's just no plan and and you're just winging it and it's a little bit random honestly so today i'm going to share with you how i repurpose my content and it's actually starting with these videos so you're on step like one right now we're step zero i suppose so this needs to be done before the repurposing happens so if you are repurposing your content now that is awesome leave me a thumbs up emoji in the comments so that i know who's doing it and i know who to like give virtual gold stars to if you're not doing it put a thumbs down in the in the comments and if you're like i don't know and i don't know where to start and i don't know what this means just put any emoji your favorite emoji and and then i'll know where where you're all at and before we get started, I still have a couple of spaces open in social media summer camp. So this is a one on one social media training and coaching program. And the point is to help you create a kick ass social media presence by the fall. So if you want to learn more about that, you can send me a, a message or an email and I'll send you the details for that and we can have a chat about it. All right. Now let's get into it. Who's excited? Okay, so for this process, I am going to assume that you have some larger piece of content that goes out every week. So for me, it's this live video. For you, it might be a, a blog or a podcast or an article, or maybe it's a live video or something else, but you have one larger piece of content, and I call this your anchor content. So anything with some some meat, something to it. And um, I'm gonna re walk you through how I repurpose my live video. So let's assume that I've done the live video that is uh, that needs to be done first. All right. So after I do the live video, then I create the the written version or, or the blog of of the live video. So this is basically the text version of the video. And one of the huge benefits of doing this and one of the reasons why I started doing it is the SEO power. So videos are amazing. They're really engaging and they're one of the most consuming forms of content on the Internet. But when it comes to Google and friends ability to pick up what is in the videos, um, it's not as good as what they can pick up in something that's actually written. So 
by creating it as, as an article or something written, uh, the SEO works in your favor more than, than it does in a video. And that's really not my area of expertise. So if an e SEO or web design expert wants to pop in and give a little bit more details on that, definitely feel free, but it gives you more power in terms of, of um, searchability and people's ability to find you based on the content that you are talking about. So this goes a long way in that world. So writing it out, and the blog is also useful for other reasons. Some people might not want to watch a video and it might be because they just prefer reading. They might be hearing impaired, which means that reading is a much better option, or it could be for other various reasons that they don't watch you or can't watch the video. So I, I write it out. And so this written version, it goes onto my website into the blog section um, and it, it's paired with the actual video which I'll get into in a minute but um, basically the way that I, I write that written version is um, I don't write it out word for word that would be incredibly long and boring my, my videos are traditionally about 50 minutes it would get quite long and there's a lot of things that aren't um, necessary to be in that written version because it's a live video. There's some engagement, introductions, preamble, and all that kind of thing. So uh, what I do is, in the past, I've mentioned how I create an outline for my live video. So I create an outline. I have my three main topics that I'm going to talk about, and I have a few points under each of them. So what I basically do is take those three main points, and I fill them out in a way that's like, pleasing to read, put a little bit of an intro, and that becomes the blog or, or the written version. So um, basically, I take the outline and I fill it out, um, clean it up grammar-wise, and, and make it read as, as good as I can, um, and create a short, short blog post. It doesn't need to be super long. So that's what I do, post it on my website. Extra bonus here is my website is currently under construction. So last week, I couldn't actually post this on my website. So what I did was I, I took that written version and I posted it as an article on LinkedIn, which kind of serves as a blog. Um, and, and you get some extra visibility over there on LinkedIn, show it to that audience. So that can be a great thing as well. So going forward, I'm going to try doing both. Um, my website's not back up yet, so not this week, but in the next few weeks, I'm gonna try doing both and um, see how that goes. It's just another place where you can post that. You don't necessarily need to change anything um, and it can give you some more visibility over there. So extra bonus points if you wanna post that written, written post over there in your LinkedIn articles. All right, so that is part of the, the blog written section. And so that goes on the website, but keep it close because we are going to return to the written aspect in just a minute. So part number two of this is the actual video. So after I go live, what I do is I download the video. I generally go live from Facebook. So I download that video from Facebook and I post the entire video over on YouTube. Now this just gives me two options for where that video is living. But from YouTube, I take the embed code um, and I post that on my website. So I post it along with the written blog. So I have the video and the blog under it and they both live there together in peaceful harmony. And, and so that goes over there on the website. Other than that, I don't reuse that whole video file because again, it's 50 minutes long generally and, and that's longer than you're gonna want for a video that's not live, okay? Because it's not live anymore, because, you know. Uh, so what I do with that video is I create three shorter videos from the actual video footage. So if I'm talking about three main points in my live video, what I do is I chop out those three individual points and create shorter three-ish minute videos. And so these videos primarily get posted over on LinkedIn. That is why I started creating them. I post them on LinkedIn and they've been performing really well. Videos on LinkedIn have been performing well generally and, and really prime length for videos over there is a, about three minutes, you know, the, the standard that you would expect for, for free recorded on demand type of video. You can post a video of up to 10 minutes 
but those videos generally don't perform as well. They are much too long for a pre-recorded video, like I said. Um, so those don't perform as well, but if you want to take smaller parts of your video and post them over there individually, you'll be get you'll get some great response to that i definitely have i've been getting lots of views lots of comments and and engagement and all the things that you generally want on your social media posts that has been working well for me up until now so along with the the videos i share the um the written part that goes along with it so if i'm sharing point number one in the video i take the text from point number one and put it alongside with it on LinkedIn and, and create the video in the text. So again, people can read generally what it's about, but there's also the video that goes along with it that creates all the, the buzz around it. So that's what goes over there. So those go out there about three times a week on LinkedIn on, on any given week. Sometimes if I have like special fourth point, there might be a, a fourth point, but generally I, I stick to three points and those go out there um, on three days a week, three separate days, giving them the chance to breathe and letting people engage with them. Now that really um, is going to point back to the importance of planning your live videos to make sure that there are distinct parts that you're gonna be able to cut out of that to repurpose. Now, I haven't tried posting these videos anywhere else yet. Uh, right now, they're just going on LinkedIn. I haven't posted them on Facebook because I've already done the live video on, on Facebook. So that exact content is already there. So I haven't tried doing it that way yet. And I haven't tried posting them on Instagram yet because your max video length is 60 seconds in the news feed. And, and IGTV and those other avenues, they're, they're a little bit tricky. So I haven't tried that yet, which brings me to number three. And number three is static posts. Now, video is amazing, as you know, I believe, and but sometimes you need to change it up. And that is why I repurpose some of the content into static social media posts. So this means, an image or photo with some some written text okay so again go back and grab the text that we created in in step one and what you're going to do is you're going to chop it into those three different pieces and that's going to be the same three pieces that you created for the the video so really those are the same but I generally use these for Instagram and, and also on, on Facebook. Um, if you made them really short, you could share them to Twitter, but um, I don't. So yeah, I don't. I just share them on Instagram and, and Facebook. But generally, as we know, I don't love Twitter. So that's another story. But the way that I've been doing them is, so say I have these three pieces of content. I'll alternate the image between an image with like a headline and a photo of me and the thing is i i love the image with the headline because it really tells you what it's going to be about but on instagram especially but I'll, i mean facebook too let's be honest images of people especially when it's like the person behind the business they perform much better than than an image with no people in it so i've been alternating i might change up the way that i do this because um i i want to get the, the most engagement possible, of course. Um, so I might change that up, but right now that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the headline, photo of me, headline, photo of me, and I just kind of alternate. So if point one is a image of me with, the, with whatever it's about, then point two will be the headlines and like build relationships and then the content. So that's the way I've been doing it now. Uh, for me, this is, has been the best way to share that content on Instagram because there's no great way to share, like repurpose a lot of video content over there. Like I said, there is IGTV, that comes with its own like parameters and it just has to be a different shape and everything. So I haven't really um, cracked what I wanna do over there right now. So for now, the best way for me is after I do the live, I do a little recap of what the live was about and I, like send people to see it and not saying check out the whole video on my blog or on Facebook. But aside from that, I couldn't come up with a great way to share more of that content. So now it's those static posts. Um, so an image with the written 
text and it's giving people the sense of what it's all about. So it's not as great as the video, but it is still putting the content out there in a way that I, I feel um, makes sense for me at this point in time. So that's how I'm repurposing it uh, for stack posts over on Instagram. And then I sh also share those on Facebook. All right. So those are the three main ways that I'm repurposing my content, uh, which is the live video. So one is the written post. Two is um, cutting out the pieces of the video. And three is creating those static posts based on those same three main points. So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit more about how to repurpose your content, what some of your options are. But remember that generally this is what I'm doing now. This is not where you need to start. So don't try to do all these things at once. If you want to start with just the written post, that is great, but don't feel like you need to do all of these things, but hopefully this gives you some options going forward. All right. Thank you so much for being with me here today, and I'll see you all on Thursday for another special guest interview.